matter of fact, Jeff Bell, let the Lord do it for you. That means I'm supposed to be here. Good morning. First, giving our praises to God, honor to you, Pastor Smith, Minister on the Rosson, you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Mount Hope Missionary Baptist Church, where we are located at 118 West Gray in historic Fourth Ward edition of Houston, Texas. Where we are led by a wonderful pastor, Dr. Samuel A. Smith Sr., and his beautiful and lovely wife, First Lady Sister Silva Smith, where they had labored 60 years here at the Mount Horeb Church. And on, and on behalf of the church, we would like to extend to you a heartfelt welcome. Our motto here is, this is the church where you enter not as a stranger, but as a guest of God. And if you're in need of a church home, when the invitation is given, we will be glad to have you as brothers and sisters in Christ. Again to you, I say you're welcome.
glory to God be the glory. Amen. God is good. In all the time, God is good. Amen. Get a lot of that type of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Our scriptorial reading become from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, and when you have it, say amen. 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 And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry, with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he had done excellent things, this is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Amen. God is good. God is good. I've, I've always mentioned God is not good to you because you've been good. God is good to you because God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for another day to be in the house of prayer. We thank you for divine protection as we slept last night. We thank you for the blood of Jesus and the power of the cross. We know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are the victors and not the victim in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask that you come into our service. Move up and down the aisle. Somebody online need a word. Somebody online don't know what to do. You got folk in here don't know what to do. Send a word, oh God, through the, through the man of God. He'll deliver and set free. You are our Lord, our God, our buckling, our shield. We honor you. We praise you. We glorify your name. We belong to you, and you belong to us. Have your way in us, with us, and through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless our leader. Bless his wife. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, we love you this morning. And we can't do this thing without you. In the mighty name of Jesus, this service is yours. Let everybody say amen. amen. amen.
Lord. Yeah. But there's something about that name. Oh, I just believe somebody's getting their breakthrough right there. I just believe somebody's getting their healing right there. That the name of Jesus, every demon has to tremble. At the name of Jesus, Jesus. there's power. Jesus. One working power. Jesus. In that name. I can depend on Jesus. Jesus. You can depend on Jesus. Call him in the morning. I can call him in the noonday. I can call him in the midnight. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. My way is Jesus. Your way out is Jesus. Your way through Jesus. I love Jesus. Help me. Help me call him. Yes, Help yes, me yes. call him. If you know him, call him. Jesus. What's his name? Yes, 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 yes. Healing in that yes, name. Yes, yes, yes. Deliverance in that name. Power yes. in that name. Power. Yes, 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 yes. In my alpha. Omega, my beginning, my ending. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, how precious. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you something. If you don't feel that, oh, how precious. They say your wool has got to be wet. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah today, sir. Hallelujah, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracious God, our Father God, how we love you. Master, how we thank you. For a visitation from your Holy Spirit today. Thank you for the move of God that have moved across this sanctuary today. And God, we believe by faith today somebody's getting delivered. Somebody's getting healed. Thank you today. Oh, Father, as we prepare to render our service to you through offertory and worship, Master, we're so gracious that all that you've done for us. And God, we give back to you so freely as your word declares that we should do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're viewing with us today by Facebook Live or by YouTube, there are various ways that you can give. Certainly, we would love for you to bring your ballot, your, your, your offering in, in person. But for some unknown reason, you can't do that. You can mail it in, or you can cash out, or, or you can go through PayPal. But certainly, we want you to be. Uh, oh, we got a new one up there. We got a cash app giving, cash app giving, cash app giving. That's, the, that's for cash app. So if you want to cash app yours in, you can. But well, certainly we want to be a, you to be a part of this offertory of worship. So Dave was so glad to see you today. How you doing? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Certainly, we want to continue to be in prayer for the Wynn family, the going home, going service for 
Sister Wynn, certainly long time, long time member, long time standing member. We certainly want to keep Felicia up in prayer. You know, at the only at the going home of my mom, that's the only thing that kept me going. Was I knew that my church family was praying for me. And maybe you don't need feel a need to pray for. And maybe you don't need somebody when they're going through. But I got news for you: if you keep living. You're going to go through, and certainly you're going to need somebody to pray for you.
Even if I try hard, been so good. You've been so good, Lord. You've been so good. If this is your testimony.
what you've been when I almost lost my mind. Eternal God, thou who made us, the one who know all about us. Thank you, Lord, for having watched over us all night last night. But then touching us with your finger of love and cause us to become a part of another day. Thank you. Because we realize that many closed their eyes last night were not privileged to open them today. But oh, thank you. You spared our moments to keep on rolling. No God, we thank you for your holy presence. We thank you for your divine touch. We realize nobody, nobody can do what you do because of who you are. No God, we praise you for your salvational work. Throughout the land and country. Oh God, we 
pray that thou wouldest use thy vessels throughout the land and country to glorify your holy name and become amenable to be used by your divine power. Ride in your sovereign way that lost men might be saved. That weak men might be made strong and strong men made stronger. Have thine own way not only here at the Mount Old Church but throughout the land and country. If it ever was a time thou art needed in the lives of men it is now. When Satan is raging on every hand. But oh God, we realize that his raging will not supersede your eternal power. Touch today, heal today, deliver today. Have thine own way in the mighty name of Jesus. For, oh God, we need a word not only here at the Mount Hall Church, but all over the land and country. A word of deliverance, a word of healing, a word of salvation. Have thine own way, in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, thou who made us and who know all about us. Send a word, my Father. Send a word today. We'll say what you would have us to say. Then when you finish with us, receive us into your eternal presence. We will ever praise your name throughout eternity. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I, I don't know. About you. But I'm so glad. that the presence of God is in this place. Amen. Even though Satan would like to have the rain, but I don't know about you, but he can't drive my vehicle. Amen. Uh, the song, Use Me, Lord, in thy service is resonating in my spirit, but I'm not going to sing that. Um, what I want you to do, I'm going to Give y'all a chance to be seated. Amen.
thank you for your voices in the choir stand. Uh, and I want to say to those of you that were singing today, don't let the devil talk to your mind right now and try to mess you up. The songs say, if when we give the best of our service, people will not say well done, but he'll understand and say well done. Um, today, we want to try and deal with what the Spirit has been dealing with me all this week and all last week. And uh, I can't really and truly say how long, but uh, I, I want you to write down the subject of my message today. And the reason why I'm asking you to write it down is because I want you to look at it after today and let the Holy Spirit answer the question and the question is a, my subject matter the question is why the cross why I want you to write that down why the cross Now, whether you know it or not, every saved person is under the cross. Yeah. And you'll stay under the cross until the Lord called you home then you will be with the one who died on the cross. But this question, why the cross? Came to me while I was asleep. And I, I woke up abruptly somewhat puzzled because that question was still very vividly in my mind. Why the cross? And uh, there is a scripture that bespeaks of the cross that I want you to write underneath that subject. And that scripture is St. John chapter 12, verse number 32. St. John chapter 12. Verse 
And that verse read, and I, if I, be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And we know that he was lifted up on a cross. Amen. The cross of crucifixion. But why? You see, it was not because of what was implicated or said, because what was said by the mob crowd crucify him. And that within itself was the capital punishment of that day for those that were contrary or who deserved that particular punishment. But the cross has a different meaning All right. when it comes to eternal life or salvation or deliverance. Um, and as we were awakened, my boss sent me to my Bible. and gave me a very vivid picture, picture of the cross and the significance of it. We, we know, according to the apostle Peter, as Peter responded to the Sanhedrin Council about the lame man that was presently standing and had been healed, had been delivered from his past life. And the Sanhedrin wanted, wanted to know what trickery was used, what manner was implemented that that lame man who had never walked was now walking, leaping, and praising the Lord. And listen to, if you will, the respond that Peter gave. And I want you to hear me. For when he responded to the question asked, what source of power what manner of performance 
Is this man now under the influence of And Peter's response was, neither is there salvation. I, I want you to hear me. When you deal with salvation, you're dealing with life eternally. Life like no other. It's not living, it's life. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name. among men that's given to man that man might be saved. That name that Peter used in Acts 3 as he talked to the lame man, he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. On. When we look at that, and try to fix what we have said to my subject matter, why the cross? Well, let me kind of parise, parise through. Uh, uh, go through the word of God. I, I think the word is peruse. Or, yeah, yeah. I, 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 flip through <laughs> the pages of the Bible. Now you wrote down St. John 12, 32. Okay. I want you to write down Romans chapter 10. All right. Now let me see where I want to start from. Verse number six. I've already read to you St. John twelve thirty-two. So I want to read to you now Romans chapter ten verses. I said six, but let me start from verse number four. For verse number four in, Matt, in Romans 10 says, For Christ, are y'all listening? Is the end of the law. for righteousness to everyone that believe it. And uh, let me thank you, Lord. 
in of the law. The law was implemented by God Almighty in the book of Genesis chapter 2. And listen to what God say. Are y'all walking with me? God said in chapter 2, verse number 16. I, I think it's 16. I don't have the word, but where he says, of every tree, what was that, 16? Huh? Thou may freely eat, but of the tree, now watch the law, he's putting the law there. He said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou mayest not eat of it. Watch law. For the day you eat from that tree, thou shalt surely die. And so death was implemented by God Almighty. Thou shalt surely die. But listen to what Paul said. Hallelujah. But the righteousness, uh, 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 verse five, four, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. Amen. So Christ brought an end to the Law of punishment, the law of exile, the law of being rejected. He put an end to it. Where did he put an end to it? On the cross. For Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness. For everyone that believe it. Skip in verse 5. Verse 6, Romans 10. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Are y'all walking with me? Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into the heaven. My subject matter was why the cross. And I want you to follow me for the cross has a horizontal, I think that's horizontal, no, vertical, horizontal is this way. The cross have a vertical being and a horizontal being. Listen to what the apostles say. And 
and it kind of answers why the cross. For Christ, Uh, is the end of the law for righteousness. To everyone that believe it, and, and I sound repetitional, but belief play an important role. Either you believe or disbelief. Your belief can bring salvation. Your disbelief can bring eternal damnation. But the settlement of our sin was settled on the cross. It was settled on the cross. Who settled it? Christ. Amen. As I read to you, John chapter 12, verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Now watch what Moses is saying because he explains the purpose of the cross. He explained the purpose of the cross, whether you believe it or not. It says, uh, Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them, watch me. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Oh my Father, Christ came down to take us up. He came down to fix us so that man can have eternal life. And so Paul says that he came from up there, down here. But his downness was not only to planet Earth. For you hear him say in John chapter 12, 32, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So when we look at the cross, the cross, he came down to take us up because sin had cast us down because of the rebelliousness of the first man. But oh, my brothers and my sisters, not only did he come down from heaven to earth, but listen to what Paul say. I want you to follow me. He says, uh, who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above? And the who Incidentally, to you is God Almighty. For in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15, God Almighty say, and I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of a woman. 
And then the seed of a woman shall bruise your head. You shall bruise his heel. And so the seed of a woman came down from heaven to planet Earth. But that's not all of the uh, horizontal uh, part of the cross. Not only did he come down to planet Earth, but listen to what the Apostle Paul said, who shall descend uh, into the earth that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Amen. The same one that brought him down raised him up. The same one that made the uh, proposition uh, to Satan that I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of a woman. That same one was God Almighty. And God did send his son uh, to planet Earth. But oh, listen to him, if you will, as he responded to uh, those that were uh, looking at him, he said, uh, that came to see about him in John chapter 12. Uh, they came to see Jesus. And Jesus said, now shall the Son of Man be glorified. In other words, they want to see Jesus not as a bread breaker, not as a, a, a water restorer, but they want to see him as a soul revival. And so Jesus, amen, had to go to Calvary to fix it so that man can have eternal life. Listen to him in verse number 32. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me and his being lifted up was on the cross and going back to that cross. I want you to follow me, if you will. Amen. One part of that cross, point up and down. Up to glory and down to earth and then underneath the earth. But all oh, that other part of that cross, the part of that cross that have that cross bar. Amen. The left side of that cross is the side of rejection. The right side of that cross is the side of reception. Amen. On the left side of that cross, amen, listen to the man on the left side say, If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Save yourself and save us. But oh, that's the rejection on the left-hand side, amen, because Satan will have you to believe that uh, Christ Jesus cannot save. Satan will have you to believe that uh, all of that about the cross and all of that about the Savior is a myth. It's not real. But oh, my brothers and my sisters, the one on the right on that cross said, uh, when thou cometh into thy kingdom, remember me, amen, which let me to know, amen, that salvation took place first on the cross. Hallelujah. Why the cross? Because salvation is available at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away. It was there by faith. I wish I had some prayers in here. Amen. You haven't seen him. We don't know if from a humanistic perspective that he's alive and well, but our faith ought to be intact. We ought to believe without a shadow of a doubt that on the cross of Calvary he did die. Anybody know he died? 
on the cross of Calvary, he gave his life. And he, why did he give his life? I'm so glad you want to know when you go to Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 5, and listen to what the uh, writer of Isaiah, Isaiah say. He was wounded for our transgression. We, we were the rebels. We were the uh, outcasts. We had done wrong. Through Adam, amen, according to what Paul say. Help me out if you will. According to what Paul say in Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, Paul say, by one man disobedience, we're all made sinners. Amen. By one man disobedience, we all were destined for hell. But oh, thanks be to God. By one man's obedience, by one man saying, go ahead and nail my hand. Go ahead and rip at my feet. But I dare you to lift me up. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And I'm so glad he, that he had drawing power. The drawing power started on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Help me if, we, if you will. The drawing power started on the cross of Calvary. Amen. The one on the right say, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said to him, Amen. Not, on, not tomorrow, but today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. The drawing power started on the cross, and I'm so glad, amen, it, it, it started on the cross, but oh, I'm so glad that uh, it will not cultivate itself, will not formulate himself, it, 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 uh, be, because I heard the apostle Paul say, I wish to add some prayers in here, in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, for the Lord himself, the same one that died on Friday, the same one that gave his nail, his hand to the nail and his feet to the spike, the same one that looked up and said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise, the same one that cried out, my God, my God, why had thou forsaken me? And then I hear him say in his final consummation, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And he placed his spirit in the hands of God for a specific reason. He died on the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But I'm so glad when he made the declaration into thy hand, I commend my spirit because 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, let me know that he's coming back again. Anybody know he's coming back again? And when he come back, he's not coming back for everybody. He's coming back to those that believe in him, those that walk in him, those that live in him, that those that have been saved by him. He's coming back for those only to to call their name and call them from deadness to liveness, call them from permanent, to, from uh, temporariness to permanence. A amen. Now, what are you saying, Brother Preacher? I don't know about you, but while I walk around on planet Earth, it's only temporary. But in the morning, when Jesus come back, amen, and call me from the grave and Call me to eternal life. And all that took place on Calvary, all that took place on the cross, he had to die that we might live. And I'm so glad that he did that. I'm glad that he gave his life, that I don't have to give my life. Amen. I, I, he that, that saved his life will lose it. But he that giveth life to God will save it. And I wonder how many of those of you that are listening to me have given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't worry about death. Death can't harm you. And death can't hold you. Because Jesus Christ, God's son, took a, took a stain from death. He died on Friday. Help me out if you will. He died on Friday. We're buried. Friday evening, stayed in the grave 
all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, according to what Paul say in First Timothy and First Corinthians chapter 15, he stepped up on resurrection ground and looked back and said, oh death, where is your stained grave? Where is your victory? And they stepped up and say, all power, both in heaven and earth, is in my hand. But all oh, my brothers and my sisters, in my closing remarks, it took place on Calvary. It take, took place on the cross. If he hadn't died, amen, you and I would not live. But I'm so glad he did die. Amen, that we don't have to do worry about death. Amen, and I'm glad that uh, the Apostle John fixed it so that believers can go on and close their eyes. And what is what are you saying, Brother Preacher, in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 14, verse 13, I hear the Apostle John say, and I heard a voice from heaven say, right? Blessed are the dead, not all the dead, but who died in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, say the Spirit, they shall rest from their labor. I'm glad uh, that was a cross experience uh, because I, had it not been for the cross, I would be most miserable. I'd be one that uh, would have to spend an eternity in hell. But oh, thanks be to God, uh, because of the cross, he picked it so that I have eternal life. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad uh, that he did die. I'm glad that he rose. Uh, I'm glad that he went to heaven. Uh, and waiting for the Father to tell him, go on down uh, to planet Earth and call the call, claim those that you have died for. And I don't know about you, but I'm one of those that did it die for. I'm one of those that know that I know that I know uh, that Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. How many of those of you listening to me? Know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior and your Lord. If you know that, stand up on your feet and say, Thanks be to God for giving me a Jesus that went to Calvary. Thanks be to God for giving me a Christ that died for me. Thanks be to God for giving me a Christ that rose for me. And one of these days, he's coming back for me. Hallelujah. 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 Why the cross? Listen. Thank you, Lord. One songwriter say, a consecrated cross I bear till death shall set me free. And then go home, my crown to wear, for there is a crown for me. Do you know? that you have a crown. Last but not least, are you bearing your cross? There may be somebody. That will take advantage of the cross experience If there is one, that will accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. That's the only way that you, you can escape the lake of fire.
is accept Jesus who made it possible that you to close your eyes in death and take a good sleep and wake up when you give the wake up call. If you're here today, if you're listening today, and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, now is a mighty good time. A mighty good hour. to say yes to the will of God and yes to the way of Christ. Not must Jesus bear the cross Alone and and all this world go go free no. that song and that song really began to take meaning when I put the needle down and put the weed down how did it take meaning because Satan is constantly trying to make those that say yes to the call of Christ and no to the way of the world. Satan is constantly trying to run you back to the way of the world. But you ought to see a consecrated cross out there till death shall set me free. And then go home, my crown to wear, for there is a crown for me. How many times, and I'm clothing, have those that have said yes to the call of Christ, how many times has Satan tried to push you back to where you were before you accepted Jesus. But hold on and hang in there because there is a greater reward for you than the things of the world. Suffer to be If the monkey get on your back, suffer the monkey through because peace will come after your suffering. God bless you.
to pastor in church today we have sister Nakia Timmons who's coming asking that the church would pray along with her uh, for traveling grace as she travels on this week we have sister Tierra McIntosh who's coming and she's has a testimony and sister Tierra Flagg who has uh, who's asking for prayer Traveling Grace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Florida with my daughter. Traveling Grace. Mm -hmm. you, and let me say this to you. You didn't come up here on your own. You were guided by Jesus, by the one that saved you. And others might be. Bow your head with me. Father God, we come lifting up this one before you who moved by your spirit to actually travel in grace. Yes, Lord. And we know that your grace is sufficient, that you're so able to direct and guide us in all of our ways. Oh, yes. In all of our travel, yes, in all of in all of our being. So God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Whatever danger over over her and the future, put it to the Yes, Lord. Let your power prevail in her way. In the strong and proper name of Jesus. Uh, you have the little one with you? Yes, yeah, she's right there. For the benefit of those of you that have any thoughts in your mind, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> I was talking to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am um, just coming today um, as pastor was preaching on carrying your, your cross or bearing your cross. Um, I had my baby on uh, February 25th. And literally a week later, I ended up back in the hospital having to have another surgery because I had a complication, and I could have lost my life. Um, and instead of God allowing it to happen inside, it happened on the outside. And I had a wound vac. Um, if any of you know what a wound vac is, it's a device that they attach to you that pretty much sucks any infection out of your body. Um, and I had to carry that. And so the doctors told me that I would have it between one and two months. And when I tell y'all I felt like I was connected to something that I didn't want to be connected to, 
um, and my doctors, you know, they make a joke about it, and they say, you know, well, name it. It's, it's your device. It's with you for a while. Name it. And I kept telling them, no, I'm not naming this because this is going to be something that's behind me. All right, all and so they kept saying, well, we don't know how long you're going to have it. And I had to go to the, uh, hospital, the doctor, the wound care clinic, two to three times a week. And so for them to change it out and everything. And so they kept saying, well, we don't know how long you're going to have. And I said, well, I believe that God is going to deliver me from this. Oh, and I kept saying that. And I kept saying that. And they, the doctor kept saying, well, I can't predict the future. I said, I don't need you to predict the future because I know what my God can do. Yeah, and no, he's going to deliver me from this thing. <laughs> and when I tell you, it felt like something that you ever been connected to something that you didn't want to be connected to. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't let it go. And it was just there on you. And I kept stepping on the the, the, uh, the little tube and pulling it out. And I'm like, Lord, I got to get rid of this thing. And lo and behold, uh, the doctor last week, last Monday, she said, I think this might be your last week with this thing. Now, mind you, I had only had it for two and a half weeks. And so she said, come Friday and we're probably going to get rid of it. I said, oh, we're going to get rid of this come Friday. We ain't, I'm not even worried about that. And so Friday came and she said, you don't need it no more. And when I tell you, I was so happy, and I told her, I said, I know what my God can do. They told me one to two months I had to be connected to this thing, and I only took me two and a half weeks. And I trusted God through that process, even in the hospital, after I had that second surgery, they kept telling me they didn't know when I was going to be at the hospital. And I kept saying, God is going to deliver me from this hospital. And where they had me in the hospital was a new area that they opened up. And in that room, it's a big old room, and you in there by yourself. And I felt you feel isolated, and you, you're not really, you don't have a roommate, so it's just you. And for me, it was just me and God. And I said, all right, God, here, go, here, here we go with something else. But I know you got me, and I know you're going to get me up out of here. And they kept saying, well, we don't know when we're going to discharge you. I said, no, don't, it don't matter what y'all tell me. <laughs> the nurses kept saying, well, they tried to diagnose me with heart issues. I said, let me tell you something. I didn't come in here with no heart issues, and I'm not leaving out of here with no heart I issues. I said, change your machine. The lady came and changed her machine, came back. She said, oh, your heart rate's fine. I said, I know it is. I said, y'all not giving me nothing. I'm getting up out of here. And so I'm just so happy that I kept trusting God through that whole process. When the enemy trying to, you know, was trying to uh, make you doubt God and trying to destroy you, trying to destroy your faith and make you believe, you know, there's something wrong with you and you're doing something wrong or, or you know, just, just causing chaos and confusion. All we have to do is trust God, and that's what I kept doing. And I'm here today, and I'm so thankful. I no longer have that wound back attached to me. My baby is healthy, and I'm asking that y'all also pray for her because she has to go to the urologist um, this upcoming week because she has a dilated kidney. So I'm asking for praying for that, but I'm believing for her to be delivered from that. I'm believing God to do what only he can do. So I just wanted to share my testimony today. God bless you. You, you know, I know that my servitude in the Lord is not in vain. I know not everyone believes, but oh, thanks be to God for the believing few that hang on in there. And trust the God. And walk the way God wants you to walk. Hallelujah. And live the way God wants you to live. And God will be on your side. God bless you. And I'm glad to see both you and my baby. Amen. She, she's my baby. Every child in here for my babies. Every person in here for my members. Amen. I just claim you all, whether you belong here or not. Amen. All right. Sister Flag is here for prayer. You know, you, you, you know, I want to tell you what just came to me. It's already fixed. It's already fixed. The mere fact that you came up to get it fixed, it's already fixed. 
but now I can, I, I can go through the formality. But it's already fixed. It's already done. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. All right. Come here. Satan will talk to you. Danger is not so. I'm going to ask the church to stand with me. Stretch forth your hand toward these three. God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. And he's He's done with us what only he can do. He's making holy those that he wants to be holy. He's touching those he wants to touch. He's empowering those that he wants to empower. And the reason why I'm saying it, you ought to say, even me, Lord, even me, whatever you want me to do, however want you want, however way you want me to live, whatever way you want me to go, whatever things you want to want me to be in, involved in, have your way. Have your way. Have your way with these. I pray. Whatever it is. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We claim the victory. Amen. Amen. Amen.
please those of you that have been baptized. I'm speaking primarily to the female that have been baptized. Please allow our dignity to cover your head. If you don't have a cover on your head, and if you have not been baptized, please do not partake of the Lord's body and his blood. Because if you partake of the Lord's body and blood, you have not been baptized. You're eating and drinking damnation to yourself, not discerning the Lord's body. For I received the Lord's body from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord night, the Lord in the same night he was betrayed, took bread and break it and say, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is often as you eat it and remember of me, you do show forth my death until I come. After the same like manner, he took the cup. After it sup, say, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This drink ye, for as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me, you do show forth my death until I come. Wherefore, my brothers and my sisters, we have assembled here today to eat of the Lord's body and drink of the Lord's blood. And so we pray that you would do it in a consecrated way. Brother Milton is going to give the prayer at this time. Let us bow. Lord God, we come before thee first to say thank you. Thank you for sending your son to do that which we could not do for ourselves remove the penalty of death and sin from before us. We thank you for sending your son wrapped in the form of a servant who was obedient even unto the suffering of the cross where he gave his hands and his body and shed his blood. He died on Calvary. And we thank you for his death, finishing on the cross, nailing all sins thereunto, removing and reconciling us back to you. We thank you for him today. Now, Lord, as we look upon the bread that represents his body and the fruit of the vine that represents his blood, we ask that you would bless it Bless us in our reception. And then, Lord, look on our hearts and minds. Remove us far from ourselves. And let us be mindful of yonder's cross. Let us be mindful of what he's done for us, the price that was paid, and the penalty that was removed. We're grateful, and we give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name we ask, amen.
body of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, eat ye all of it in remembrance of him. The blood of Jesus, drink ye all of it in remembrance of him. <laughs> 